In this video, I'm going to very quickly go over some of the aspects of our self-concept. So our self-concept is a set of perceptions that a person has about him or herself. For the most part, the self-concept is relatively enduring, meaning it doesn't change much over time. And a lot of you may argue and say that our self-concept changes over time, say, I'm not the person who I was 15 years ago. And I will tell you that I am also not the person I was 15 years ago. But I question, is it so much that our self-concept has changed? Or have we just learned more about ourselves through self-reflection, through others, through all these origins that I'm gonna talk about here in just a second? Have we just learned more about ourselves over time to the point that our self-concept has maybe changed in that way? But overall, who we are doesn't really change much over time. But we self-discover and we self-reflect and we start to think about who it is that we are and as we grow older we learn more about ourselves. So where does our self-concept come from? It comes from a lot of different sources. So the first place is from other people. This is also known as the looking glass self. That's actually a term from like 1902, William Cooley. Um, and what that means is, is that we learn about ourselves from our communication with others. See, the communication. This is why we study self-concept in this course. So in terms of the self-concept, from others, if somebody tells you a lot, boy, you know, you make really good cookies. And you've heard that from family members. You maybe you've heard it from, you know, family members and you think, oh yeah, they're just trying to be nice. When you hear it from strangers, you make really good cookies. You should really be a baker. When you start to hear that from multiple people, you start to really internalize that and think to yourself, gee, you know, maybe I am really good at making cookies. Um, maybe I should be a baker. And then it becomes more of your self-concept. So again, from others um, is a really big one. In fact, I would say that's where a lot of our self-concept comes from, is from our communication with others. We notice how people look at us. We notice their nonverbals. We notice how people give us feedback. We notice what people say to us directly. We internalize those things and make them part of our self-concept. So you can think about one more negative aspect of this with bullying and how bullying can get out of control and really affect our self-concept and self-esteem, which um, a lot of these origins that I'm talking about go with self-esteem as well. So again, that's the looking glass self. Self-observation is another one. There are some things that people can't really tell us about ourselves. We have to self-discover. So one thing about me, I really like dessert. It's become kind of part of my self-identity that um, I just really like to eat dessert. Um, people around me, pretty much everyone who knows me, knows that I'm probably going to go have a cookie, I'm gonna have a cookie in my hand at some point, or chocolate cake, or like I think about dessert all day long. This is a true story, I really do like dessert. Um, that's not something that people have told me over time. It's just something that I've grown and I've really learned to like to eat dessert. So that's a self-observation. Um, a lot of times our likes and dislikes, like I said, are not things that other people tell us about. Our likes and dislikes, our attitudes, beliefs, they are certainly influenced and shaped by others. But as part of our self-concept, these are things that we have internalized ourselves over time. Another origin is our group associations. So our group associations um, are parts of basically groups that we associate with. I know I just restated that definition. But let me give you some examples to have this make more sense. So if you're part of a church, you might associate yourself as part of that church. I am a Christian, I am a Lutheran, I am a Methodist, I am a Catholic, I am a Muslim. You're associating yourself with that group as part of your self-identity. So that is a group association. For those of us that are from Iowa, um, I think I mentioned before, I am not originally from Iowa, I am from Illinois, but majority of students that take this class are originally from Iowa. You may consider yourself a group association, I am a Hawkeye. Um, you may also say I'm a cyclone, but generally in this area, we hear a lot more people saying I'm a Hawkeye. And um, since Iowa is Hawkeye state, we do hear a lot of people saying, associating themselves with being a Hawkeye. So again, that is a group association. If you are a fan of a specific team, if you associate yourself with some sort of group of other people, of like people, I'm a cat person. There's a group association there too. Um, that, those are gonna be your group associations. And then we have assumed roles. So these are just roles that you kind of are assumed into. So for example, I am a wife. That's a role I assumed when I got married. I am a mother to two children. That is a role I assumed when I ha had my children. I am an owner and mother to a cat, Lily. 
So that is a role that I assumed when I adopted Lily. So these are just roles. Um, I, I could say like they're not necessarily roles you choose, they're kind of roles that are given to you, but I've heard students make the argument before that, well, you chose to get a cat, so you chose to be in that role. But I could choose to be a cat, and then I could like not take care of the cat or um, not associate myself with the cat. My husband is not a big cat person, and him and Lily tolerate each other, but like he would not associate himself, his self-identity, as a cat person. Um, or he would probably not even consider his assumed role to be Lily's caregiver because I'm the one that really takes care of Lily. And then finally, social comparisons. So social comparisons, we compare ourselves to others a lot through self-observation. We compare ourselves to others to really determine like who we are as well. So we look to other people. Um, we're influenced by other people all the time. Uh, the way we dress, the way we act, many times is influenced by all the other people that we've been around. But in terms of self-esteem, as well as our self-concept, how do we determine whether we're good or bad at something or whether we're fortunate or unfortunate? And a lot of this comes from upward and downward social comparisons. So an upward social comparison is when we look to others and we see like it's something to work towards. So this can kind of be negative and it can also spin it in a positive light because I like to look every, at everything in a positive light. So one example for this is so um, I was just in California last weekend and um, my sister lives out there and they drove me through Beverly Hills and I saw a lot of like $10 million homes, $20 million homes, really, really, really huge homes. And while part of me is thinking to myself, I would never want to clean that kind of house. Why would somebody need to own that much space? What would they do with all that space? There's the other part of me that is like, I would never be able to afford a $10 million home. Boy, I wish I could. I wish I had that kind of money. What are these people doing that I'm not doing to be able to own a $10 million home? So that's upward social comparison. I kind of look to those people who are maybe a little bit better off or own something bigger and better than I do. And I think to myself, it's not so much jealousy. It's more of like, what have I done wrong in life to get to this spot? And what have they done right to get to that spot? Um, and it's that perception, right? The perception that I might have of myself. So that can hurt your self-esteem. On the other hand, upward social comparison can also give you something to work towards. So when you look up to somebody and you want to be like them, so for example, maybe you have a coworker who just finished their degree and they finished their degree, they graduated, they got a promotion and you're thinking to yourself, like, that's what I want to, where I want to be in five years. I want to finish my degree. I want to go get a job, I want to get a promotion, I want to be in their position in five years. That's still upward social comparison, but instead of really making it you feel bad about yourself, it really helps give you a goal in mind of something to work towards. It's very motivating. So again, those have um, impacts on our self-concept and self-esteem as well. Now the uh, downward social comparison is the exact opposite. It's when we look to others who maybe aren't as good as something of us and we feel better about ourselves or someone who's maybe less fortunate and we feel more fortunate. So one example of this might be in the classroom. Um, you might get your test back and you might have earned an A on that test. Well, if everybody else in the class earned an A on the test, you probably don't feel as good about that A. When you find out the class average was a 70% and only one person in the class got an A and that was you, you're gonna feel really good about doing that. That's gonna up your self-esteem, up your confidence, and maybe say to your self-concept, gee, I'm really good at math. Look at nobody else could do this and I did. So you feel better about yourself in that way. Um, another example is back to being in California, you know, when you get past those $10 million homes, there's a lot of people in the Los Angeles area who are homeless, who are, you know, by the sleeping on park benches, um, who are outside begging for money. Um, and you look at those people and you think to yourself, how did they get to this spot? I'm so fortunate. I'm not gonna worry about these $10 million homes. I own a nice modest home in a nice area that's safe. I'm really lucky. I feel a lot better about myself now. So those are the main origins of your self-concept. Um, as you go along, really start reflecting on these ideas of your self-concept and you'll really get a better idea as to who you are as well.